Panasonic released the world's first mirrorless camera in 2008, the Lumix G1, which was also the first Micro Four Thirds camera. Panasonic and Micro Four Thirds enjoyed significant success in the industry, but that did not last long. In recent years, the shipment data proved that there is a sharp decline in market share for Panasonic and Micro Four Thirds. In this video, I want to discuss the mistakes that Panasonic did that led to the decline of the market share. Let's do this! Let me be clear that this is not a video to bash Panasonic. I am a Micro Four Thirds fan, if you don't know already, and that means I also love Panasonic. I'm still currently actively using some Panasonic Micro Four Thirds products, namely the excellent Panasonic GM1 and some Panasonic lenses like the 15 1.7 and 9 f1.7. I love those Panasonic lenses. And I really admire Panasonic for what they have contributed to the Micro Four Thirds and overall camera community. They were the first to release the mirrorless camera. They showed the world how to make an excellent mirrorless camera. Over the years, many brands and other manufacturers have copied Panasonic and Micro Four Thirds. They enjoy a significant success for a period of time. So what happened? In the recent years, the latest data that I can find from the shipment data going out from Japan in the year 2024, it shows that Panasonic only holds about 3.4% market share. And that actually includes both the Elmao full-frame cameras as well as Micro Four Thirds cameras, which means the number of the Micro Four Thirds cameras or the market share is actually lower. So this is actually very serious. Once they were doing so well and now they were barely keeping up with any other competitors out there. In this video, I want to talk about what happened, what are the mistakes that Panasonic did, what they could have done differently. Number one, late to the image stabilization game. I acknowledge that this is not the main reason for the declining market share, but it is one important mistake nonetheless. For the longest time, Panasonic refused to include image stabilization in their camera body. They include stabilization in some of their lenses, not all, but some. And Olympus, back then, also an important Micro Four Thirds player has image stabilization in every single camera body that they have released from day one. So Panasonic only started to include the image stabilization in the camera body in 2013 with the Lumix GX7, which I think is quite late and it wasn't even the best stabilization in the market. It was only a two axis image stabilization where Olympus already started with the five axis image stabilization. Panasonic introduced their first five axis image stabilization in GX8 that's in 2015 and subsequently in some newer cameras like the G9 only truly has a powerful 5 axis image stabilization that can rival what Olympus has achieved. While this is not a serious matter but it shows that they were a little bit behind and the stubbornness of not acknowledging the importance of having a built-in camera image stabilization. I think a lot of the cameras could have sold better especially the low level cameras like the Panasonic GF series if they've just included image stabilization in the camera. Mistake number two late to the face detection autofocus. And this was quite contradictory to what Panasonic was doing back then. They were pushing the cameras towards the video direction. They included some serious video capabilities in the GH series line, the GH3, GH4, GH5. And yet these cameras do not have face detection autofocus. At the same time, almost everyone else in the market had some form of face detection autofocus that really improved the effectiveness and efficiency efficiency of autofocus for stills and video when you are trying to have moving subjects or you want to track the movement of subjects in your frame. And with face detection, that is just more effective. And Panasonic only started to include face detection autofocus in G9 Mark II, which was 
two or three years ago and that is too late. Maybe in their minds, Panasonic, the people were thinking that, oh, if you are a serious cinematographer or if you're doing video, if you know what you're doing, you'll probably just do manual focus all the way. But here's the thing. You can't just target videographers or cinematographers, right? How many of us buying the microphotters are actually actual cinematographers? I am a YouTuber. I'm not a cinematographer. I am a solo creator. I am a one-man crew. When I mount a camera on a tripod to film this talking head video, I rely on autofocus. I don't want to have to deal with manual focus. Every single time I reframe or change my distance on the camera, I need manual focus, right? So autofocus solve this problem, it is so convenient. So when other manufacturers like Sony and Canon, they come up with really reliable and super fast autofocus, tracking moving subjects effectively, that is when Panasonic fell so far behind. I know, I know in the newer cameras these days, they have face detection autofocus, but it is already too late. Mistake number three, intentionally nerfing the low range cameras. It is quite frustrating to see that the low range cameras from Panasonic could have done a lot better and could have received more attention from the general crowd if they have included some important features. Like we know Panasonic is awesome for vlogging. They even somehow marketed the lower level cameras like the GF series and the G100, which was actually intentionally made for vloggers or content creators. So why don't you include some of the important features like image stabilization and face detection autofocus in these cameras that were designed for content creators. Without reliable autofocus, without stabilization, how are you gonna run and gun and use the camera as a solo creator? I just thought this was a missed opportunity. I understand they are trying to maybe differentiate the low level cameras from the high level cameras, but if you really look into the market, I understand not many people have image stabilization at the low range cameras from Canon, Nikon, or Fuji, but at least they've included face detection autofocus and some sort of subject tracking which works really well, especially for human face. And that's what we want, all right? If you're making the camera for video making or if you want the camera to film yourself, I think a reliable autofocus with the face detection autofocus is really important. I know I've said this already in point two, but this particular argument is for the low level cameras, which actually make up the majority of the market, all right? Not everyone can afford the top tier camera, but if your camera is affordable, if you look at the low range cameras, the entry level cameras, these are the cameras that anyone can afford. Mistake number four, making cameras too large and heavy. Now let's take a few steps backwards and really look into what Micro Four Thirds philosophy truly is. When it comes to Micro Four Thirds, it's all about making small, lightweight, portable camera and lens system that can still deliver fantastic and professional looking results. The key word is making small and portable system. And somehow Panasonic lost the plot along the way. Instead of making small cameras, something that's easy to carry around, they're making cameras that are larger and heavier than full frame counterparts out there. If you look at the Panasonic G9 Mark II and GH7, these camera bodies are larger and heavier than some mirrorless full frame cameras from other camera brands, like for example, Canon R6 Mark III, Nikon Z6 Mark III, and Sony A7 series, right, A7R Mark V. These cameras are actually smaller and lighter than the Panasonic GH7 and G9 Mark II. Yet, the sensor size, the Micro Four Thirds sensor in the GH7 and G9 Mark II is only about a quarter of the size of a full-frame image sensor. I'm not asking you to make the camera half of the size of a full-frame, but you can and should make it smaller and more portable, which is more in line with the original philosophy of Micro Four Thirds. If I want to use a camera that is large and as heavy as a full frame, why don't I just use a full frame camera? Why do I want to use a Micro Four Thirds camera? 
Mistake number five, going full frame. I know Panasonic is free to do whatever they want. They can go medium format, full frame, or if you want to make smartphones, it's perfectly fine. But it sends a contradictory message to what they're trying to do. They were the first to make micro full thrust system. They were the big player, right? There's only Olympus and Panasonic making camera bodies out there. So when one major player for micro four thirds decided to go full frame, which is totally different from the micro four thirds format, it sends a very contrasting message. And is there a future for micro four thirds? Is Panasonic giving up on micro four thirds? What are they doing? So are they cashing in on the trend of full frame? Are they supporting full frame? Are they ditching micro four thirds altogether? Have they lost their faith in micro four thirds? Should the consumers continue supporting Panasonic micro four thirds? How about those who have invested so heavily in Panasonic micro four thirds? What is the future of Panasonic's Micro Four Thirds system. Everything is in question, and this definitely eroded the confidence in the market for Panasonic's involvement or the commitment for Micro Four Thirds system. That definitely contributed to the downfall and decline of the market share, especially for Panasonic's Micro Four Thirds. And at the same time, their L Alliance full frame cameras are not doing that well anyway. Which begs the question, right? If Panasonic have truly, fully focused just on Micro Four Thirds and really poured all the resources and R&D and everything to make Micro Four Thirds truly shine, not split the resources between Micro Four Thirds and full frame L mount, I think the Micro Four Thirds could have done a lot better today, especially when it comes from Panasonic. That's all to share about the mistakes that Panasonic did for the Micro Four Thirds system that led to the decline in the market share. Do you agree with my argument or do you have anything else to add? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Let's have a healthy discussion. I wish that Panasonic have done some things differently in the past, but the past is the past. Mistakes have been done and we can't go back to the past and change them. So I wish Panasonic will do better in the future. I wish they continue to invest and believe in the Micro Four Thirds system. I do hope that Micro Four Thirds will continue not just to survive but to thrive in the market. And that means Panasonic should not repeat the mistakes that they have done and learn something from it, right? And yes, I do want to continue to see amazing Micro Four Thirds products from Panasonic and OM Digital Solutions. That's my wish. <laughs> and yeah, that's all I have to share. I hope you've enjoyed this particular session. Please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal to support me and this channel to keep it going. How you can do that, all the links are in the description below. Until the next one, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.